This is a very exciting time to be in the oil business, and we are seeing a lot of articles that are talking about $100 oil. Okay, this wasn't very popular a few months ago when I was one of the few people talking about it, but I love this article uh, that I read today. Uh, WTI crude right now, 41.78 a barrel. Brent crude, 44.70. I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. If you're interested in oil, whether as investment or you're in the business, this is the channel for you. Please subscribe. Uh, this is an article written by David Messler. He's in. He was in the oil business. He retired, and now he writes articles for OilPrice.com. Here's how oil could skyrocket by 138 percent. Now he did a great job breaking it down for us. He's using real factual data. He's not on some uh, 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 Fox News interview and some random guy saying, "Hey, I think we're going to hit 100 dollars oil." He breaks it down very well. And so the now here's a here's a little diagram showing uh, uh, crude oil inventories. And f- this is from 2019 to 2020. As you can see here, uh, we go from 450 million to close to 500 million. And we peak uh, 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 just below 550 million. But as you can see here, our inventories are starting to drop rapidly. Okay. It's a very fast decline. All right. So take these two bullets below to the bank. Suppliers of crude oil are going to, uh, sorry, supplies of crude oil are going to drop just as demand is on the increase. Oil prices are going to continue advancing higher. Uh, Focusing on the Permian as it alone accounts for over half of U.S. daily shell production, let's note the slope of the decline that began, excuse me, began in March and accelerated in April. So as you can see here, from December to May here, um, we were at f- 5.4 million barrels a day of output from the Permian Basin. And then there's a very fast decline in April. And as you can see here, it continues to drop in May to 4.3 million a day. The continued decline in drilling in the USA has sealed the fate for shale, which is bullish factor number one for oil prices. Shale production has has peaked and we'll never again see the shale production over 9 million barrels of oil oil per day. What is this profound decline in drilling pretend? From January to now, we've lost 550 rigs at an average of 800 barrels of oil per day per rig. That's 440,000 of new production we haven't seen. Legacy decline amounts to about 300,000 barrels of oil per day. Legacy means old, older wells have already been drilled and they have a decline rate. So uh, amounts to about 300,000 barrels of oil per day through May. Those two numbers together come to roughly 750,000 barrels of oil per day. With only 246 rigs adding to new production, there's a gap of 500,000 barrels of oil per day from drilling activity year on year alone. The problem of the high legacy decline will only accelerate as this year closes out in 2021 dawns. Okay, and so as you can see here, this is the rig count. Uh, end of 2019. And as you can see here, uh, to now August 7th, we went from 805 rigs to 246 here. Okay. Now, uh, Libya, uh, years of political strife have wrought to toll on this OPEC producer. OPEC's monthly production report paints a gloomy picture with their production dropping from 1.1 million barrels of oil per day last fall to 80,000 barrels of June. Now, Libya is going through hell right now, and he's accurate about this. We went, they went from 1.1 million barrels a day to 82,000, and here's why, uh, because of Libya's oil blockade. Uh, Libya's port blocked is set to keep the North African country's oil off the market until at least the fourth quarter of 2020, which, as devastating as it will be for Libyan oil revenues, could help reduce the expected global production glut by 65%, rested energy uh, on Friday said, currently oil production in Libya is around 100,000 barrels per day. This figure is dramatically down from the 1.2 million barrels a day start of the year. Okay. Now, here's an, here's an interesting fact. Just before uh, preliminary formations affiliated with Libyan National Army, LNA of Eastern Libyan Strong. So it is the LNA, uh, the Libyan National Army, 
that is uh, causing this blockade to prevent the production. And, and what they're trying to do, they're trying to get their demands met for the people of that country uh, before they release the production of oil. So that's their bloodline. That's their lifeline for money for that country. And so they're trying to overthrow the government by uh, trying to get them to meet their demands. Now, what's interesting is that the LNA and Russia are working together. So I truly believe that this is Russia's proxy in order to control oil output. Okay, Russia, it's not enough for Russia to play the game of chess on one side of the of the board. He wants to have the board. And so he's setting up his pieces. And so uh, he, Russia, Putin, man, he is running the board with his using his power, his military, and he knows the dirty politicians he knows the guys he can uh, control all right so venezuela oil production in the nearly failed state has fallen around 375,000 barrels of oil per day and as of the end of june in the last 20 years this country oil production has dropped from 3.5 million barrels of oil per day to present levels this situation is unlikely to resolve itself favorably in the upward direction anytime soon as the very last rig still drilling in Areno has been laid down as per the Forbes article. So they don't have any rigs running in, in Venezuela. Uh, they're falling apart. Overall, the case for oil supplies and production rates continue to diminish for prices to continue to rise is stronger than the inverse scenario we expect year-end. U.S. domestic shell production to be in the neighborhood of 5 million barrels of oil per day. This represents a year-on-year -year decline of about 45%. So he's saying we expect about, uh, if you compare it to last year, we're expecting about a decline of about 45%. Okay, In January of 2020, with 805 rigs running, U.S. shell production peaked at 9.3 million barrels of oil per day, a moderate decline rate of 50%. Annual shell decline rates vary 30% for great tier one acreage wells to as high as 70% year on year for lower tiers poorly completed wells. So in other words, a shell well is going to uh, decline anywhere from 30 to 70% uh, uh, each year. For legacy decline, the first year would see production halved. Okay. Now, if 2020 averaged 435 rigs per day, that's 350,000 barrels of oil per day new production from drilling for the year. So they're expecting about an increase of 350,000 additional barrels of oil per day for new production. Uh, in that scenario, we add that new oil to what's left after the legacy decline, 4.6 million barrels of oil per day, and we get 5 million barrels per day. So if you add up uh, how many uh, rigs were missing and with the expected uh, new production and with the legacy decline, we're expecting 5 million barrels of oil per day uh, output for shale. So numbers don't lie. This admittedly simple math for incredibly complex, actual, almost incalculable calculation. But if I'm even close to being right and storage truly does get worked off around the world, get ready for a hundred dollar oil. I completely agree uh, with this gentleman, David Messler. If you if it's a good read, it's a great article. I read the whole thing. I printed it out, underlined it, a lot of things. I really enjoyed his article, but I'm expecting oil prices to be around 100 plus mark. And and I get this question all the time, Sean. What what stock do I need to invest in? Well, here's the deal. If you look at the the a lot there there's a lot of talk about big oil moving to green tech. Okay, and so British Petroleum is looking to drop. He said, BP said that by 2030, it would be producing 30 to 40% less oil and gas than it does now. And uh, here's where they're looking to go. They're looking to get into biomass. Biomass is trees, burning trees. They're looking to replace oil with burning trees. What that tells me is that they are accepting defeat. And, and it's really simple, guys. They grew their, I mean, they grew their business to a level that they, in order for them to sustain, they have to drill for a lot of oil. They went from hundreds of million 
uh, of dollars invested in, in, in drilling for oil to the billions, high billion figures, okay? And so in order to, keep, to feed the beast, they got to keep drilling for oil. But the problem with shale is that the decline rate is massive. So to maintain the revenue, they have to drill a lot of shale oil. So they took all that easy to get to money from the banks and they spent it all and they lost their butts. So what else are they going to do? There, there's no, where else are they going to spend hundreds of billions of dollars to develop big oil? It doesn't exist, guys. Shale is a big loser. They lost. The banks know it, and they're they're drawing back their their investments in shale, and they're asking for their money. Hey, we lent you the money to spend it on shale. Now you got to start paying us for it. Well, that ain't happening either, because there's no revenue in that. Okay. So what is oil to do? Well, let's start burning trees. Look, guys, if you invest in the stock market, you're investing in a losing proposition. You're investing in an oil company that's wanting to get out of the oil business. How does that make any sense? I mean, if you are interested in green technology, you need to start investing in green technology, which if you haven't watched uh, the, the, the documentary by Planet of the Humans, I'm going to put a link in this video. You could watch it. I'm telling you right now, uh, green tech is a losing proposition, and we're going to see triple-digit oil again. And it's and, and we we there, there's a major divestment in the oil and gas industry. Production is being destroyed. the The economy is turning around. Demand is increasing. I mean, we went we we, we our demand is at ninety. Let's see. Um, I believe uh, so. In June, global oil demand was somewhere around is somewhere around 90 million barrels per day up from 75 to 80 million barrels a day in April. Now, everybody was saying we're going to drop down to like 40 million barrels a day for demand because of COVID-19. No, we really only dropped down to 75 to 80 million barrels a day. Now we're up to 90 million and 100 million was pre-COVID level. So we only need 10 more million barrels a day demand and things are moving much faster than expected. The world's Biggest oil produ uh, producing and oil exporting company, state oil uh, giant Saudi Aramco, is optimistic about the pace of oil demand recovery in Asia. We are seeing a partial recovery in the energy market as countries around the world take steps to ease restrictions and reboot their economies. Demand for crude oil in Asia has almost returned to the levels from before the pandemic. At the end of June, uh, said that the worst in the oil market was over and noted that he is very optimistic. So, look, I'm seeing this uh, continuously, but there's an agenda against oil. There's an agenda because the Democrats have an agenda. Uh, global warming is a real thing to these guys. And they truly believe that green technology is going to replace uh, oil. Ask uh, um Oscar Ortez girl, I forget her name, but uh, she's she's the one pushing the Green New New Deal. I mean, a child is pushing the Green New Deal in old uh, Bernie Sanders and in Biden and Al Gore and all these guys are backing this thing. Okay, and so um, like I said, watch the documentary by Planet of the Humans. I'll let you uh, decide whether you think uh, a green tech can actually replace fossil fuels, but I'm here to tell you right now, um, in the long run, oil prices are going up. The stock, if you are interested in investing in oil and gas, um, I'm not a stock guy. I'm not a stock broker. I can't give stock advice, but I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't be, I would not touch the oil and gas stock market right now. I focus on conventional oil deals. Shale oil and gas is done. It's unconventional. It, it costs $60 per barrel to get a, a barrel of oil out of the ground, where conventional oil, um, you're looking at $15 to $20 per barrel to extract uh, oil out of the ground, sometimes even much less. And so right now, premium leases are easier to come by because there's less competition. There's The money has dried up completely. And also, uh, it's, it's much more economical to drill right now because people are very competitive because they're desperate to keep food on their table. And so we're finding premium leases that we wouldn't be able to get into if oil prices were $100 a barrel. We're able to drill for much cheaper and we are profiting at $40 oil. All right, guys, if you have any questions and if you'd like to talk to me, look in my description below. You can find information to connect with me. 
I'd love to chat with you. If you like this channel, if you like these videos, uh, subscribe to my channel and we will talk soon. Thanks.